Peter Charles here, Fooked Fly, Fly Fishing. And if you've been paying any attention to my fly tying uh, channel, you would run across my Weimer series, and that's a portmanteau of wet and streamer, because these flies can be swung like a wet fly or stripped like a streamer, which is the reason why I came up with the name. It's been my most effective streamer by far. I've got four, at least 14 different species on it, maybe more. Uh, I've done it in a number of variations, the brown trout weemer, the saltwater weemer, the black-nosed dace weemer. They're all basically constructed the same way and using a marabou hackle uh, to give movement even in slow currents and when moved slowly. The other thing was careful choice of hooks to avoid them coming through the water like this. We wanted them to come through straight. So that worked great in terms of the presentation of the fly, but it did produce one major problem, and that is wing fouling, where the wing gets uh, wrapped around the hook shank, and that's caused often by hitting the water on our back cast. So this became rather difficult to deal with, and I came up with one solution which I put in a video, uh, where I put a short chunk of bucktail underneath the primary wing which gave it a little bit of stiffness and prevented it from wrapping around so easily. It didn't completely eliminate the problem with fouling but it did cut it down quite a bit. So I still wanted to work with this a little bit more to reduce the fouling problem, get it close to zero because then this will be pretty well one of the most effective streamers you've ever used if you can get the fouling problem under control. So I've got my saltwater weemer uh, on the vise here. Now this fly could be used uh, in a, a lighter version for smallmouth or, or trout. Any head hunting species will take this fly. So what I have done with this particular version, I was using these uh, Gaokatsu uh, tarpon hooks. They are a little heavy for salt water, uh, sorry for fresh water. Now there, I have a lighter salt water hook here, these uh, Daiichi. 2477s. Uh, you could use any relatively light hook uh, in a size, say size 2 to size 4, being a very, or size 1 to size 4, let's say. And if you want to downsize the fly to uh, make it useful for trout, you could go down to size 8 if you want. But the whole idea, it's a very, very short shank, as you can see here. There's no body on this fly. It's like the saltwater reamer pattern. We don't bother with the body. And so, what happens is this thing, because the gape is so far forward and this part of the fly is so stiff relative to the rest of it, it's very difficult for this to foul. It's not impossible, but you have to work at it. You really have to whack the water behind you continuously to make it do that. I mean, I've fished an entire full day without a single fouling problem. So you, you can fish this without any difficulty. Now, I'm going to tie up another one of these. It's going to be uh, with a smaller hook, a lighter hook, uh, for smallmouth bass. So let's get started, and I'll show you what I've been, the small changes I've made to ensure that this thing uh, remains, uh, you know, no, uh, an attractive pattern in the water, yet at the same time it, uh, it remains foul resistant. For thread, we're going to start off with this Danville monofilament, uh, and that allows the materials to, sh to show through the head. As I said, we're going to be using this Daiichi 2477. We're going to use a size 1. Our hackle is white marabou. And then we're going to use some white bucktail as just as a stiffener. So that uh, keeps the helps to prevent some of that tucking around. We'll use two kinds of flash. I've got lateral scale and fluorescent uh, crystal flash. You could use just one if you want. Having two gives us the advantage of uh, a little bit of contrast and a little bit of additional action. The main wing is going to be this olive bucktail. And we're going to top it with some peacock curl. So let's get started. I'm not going quite as dense with the marabou as this is a freshwater pattern. So you want to be able to use it for bass and for trout. And we're going to bring it pretty well right up to the eye of the hook. We're going to crowd the eye because 
they're going to wrap over it and uh, squish it down. You want the head of this fly to be fairly large. So as usual I put in a wrap before I start stroking back because the tips of marabou feathers are quite uh, delicate. Now I'll take this moment to make sure it's reasonably well distributed around the hook shank so you don't have one spot that is bare. One of the problems you get into, not so much with this hook, it's heavy enough that it wouldn't be a problem, but with lighter hooks, if your marabou's sort of packed onto one side, it can t cause the fly to turn on its side. Okay, next up is the uh, white bugtail. You don't need a big clump of this. Now what we do is we just separate it from the marabou, lift it up, and trim it off. So all that does is it creates a stiff under underwing that prevents the uh, top, the rest of the materials from wrapping around the hook. And just some soft wraps at the back to make that st stay down. Now we're going to put in our flash. I'm afraid my crystal flash has seen better days. Now for the olive bucktail, you want the wing a, a little bit shorter than the um, flash. Now if you feel that the white underneath, the buck, white bucktail underneath is a little bit too uh, blunt, just come in with your point of your scissors and make it a little bit more ragged. There we go. That helps also to create that illusion of a fat belly on a fish. Now we put in our uh, peacock curl. We want to line up the tips. Make sure it's sitting on top. Now, if you see one of these is sticking up, don't worry about it. Once you fish it, it will lay down. Now we're just going to finish off the head. And I want to uh, try to get that um, peacock curl not to stick up too much to the wraps of thread. Now for our stick on eyes.
we just put a few wraps over the eyes and that way they stay put. You can catch numerous fish on this fly and those eyes won't come off. Okay now for some UV glue. There we go, the weemer. In the uh, brown trout or the smallmouth bass uh, version. You can actually use this for steelhead, believe it or not. I know steelhead like to tail nip, but what I found with the weemer patterns is they eat it. So they will actually take it right into the throat. They won't come up behind it and nip it. They try to eat the thing. So I, I think you could get away with using this fly even for steelhead, despite the very short shank. I've caught on this uh, old style weemer that uh, I used to use. Uh, I've caught lots of steelhead on it. In fact, I miss lots of steelhead because I'd be swinging the fly, swinging the, the brown trout weemer, and I'd hear tick, 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 or I'd feel it actually. And I'm going, what's that? What, what, what's making that tick? Because I'm not anywhere near the bottom. And one day I felt the tick and I just went, set the hook, bang, there was a steelhead on the end. I realized what was happening. They come up, they inhale the fly, and they will begin to turn. And the tick, tick, tick was the tippet skipping over their teeth. And of course, they then spit it out. And, you know, I would never even know they were there except the tick, tick, tick. So, yeah, they were taking it all away in the mouth. So I think you could even use this for steelhead because they'll hit it more aggressively than they would, say, a regular tractor pattern, uh, you know, like an intruder or something, which they tend to tail nip. Uh, this looks edible, so they'll eat it. You'll also get um, walleye on this, no trouble. Okay. Um, you could use it for salmon. You could, I've caught salmon on this. You could use it for steelhead, um, Pacific salmon, you name it. Uh, pike, oh, pike, largemouth bass, they'll all work. So give it a try, the Weimer. And no fouling. Cheers.